Heroes are one of the biggest parts of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Characters that will join the Ouroboros on their quest across Ionios, acting as a 7th party member with a class from the main party to use in battle. Naturally, they're a big deal. So we thought we'd put together this handy guide to make sure you get them all. Now, a couple of important things to keep in mind before we get started. First off, yes, there will obviously be spoilers in this video. We'll be going through the heroes in order as seen in the class menu. Secondly, before we start running through each individual hero, we'll remind you that upon a hero joining you, a character from your party will immediately inherit the class to try out. By fighting alongside the hero and other party members using this class in battle, others will soon earn the class for themselves as well. All six party members can earn every single class, so you may have your work cut out for you to get them all. And finally, we will not be detailing the gameplay of each of the heroes in depth in this video. This video is focused on how to unlock each of the heroes. If you're looking for how to uncap a hero to rank 20, check the hero roster in your system menu. As long as at least one party member has hit rank 10 with a hero's class, you should be able to see their ascension quest requirement. And if you need more on that, check number 11 in our tips video from the other day. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get into the guide. Your first hero is Silvercoat Ethel, an attacker. Her class is the Flash Fencer. You'll unlock Ethel early in Chapter 3, as part of the main story, and a general introduction to heroes. However, she will only temporarily be part of your party. The game will give you a pretty clear and direct warning when she'll be leaving, though. Next up is Artificer Valdi, a healer. He's a war medic from Colony 30, who you'll meet in Chapter 3 as part of the main story. He serves as another general introduction to heroes, and teaches you a necessary traversal skill to progress, climbing up walls. Next up is Dutiful Zeon, the commander of Colony 9. This defender is a guardian commander, and an old friend of Noah and company. After liberating Colony 30 and obtaining Valdi, you'll find a discussion topic prompting the party to check in on Colony 9. Following this hero quest, called Where the Heart Is, will lead you straight to Zeon. Moving on to our first Agnian hero on this list, Inscrutable Teach, a healer. He's a thaumatage, and can get pretty combo heavy. As the commander of Colony Gamma, you'll unlock Teach by freeing the colony. You can find the start of this quest by returning to where the party first crossed paths, and heading back up the path Mio's team came from. Find the quest-related event on the map, and it should lead to the hero quest Going Beyond Power. Teach grants your party the ability to climb up steep sandy slopes, so he's one you'll want to get early on to open up your exploration options. Continuing through our list of heroes from the class selection, up next are the team's pair of Nopon, Riku and Manana. While this pair accompany the party throughout the game, they only decide to start fighting in Chapter 3. You'll gain the Yumsmith Attacker class by playing through the story. Ashen Pelt Grey is next the mysterious Full Metal Jaguar that attacks with a pair of guns. You'll find Grey by heading to a quest-related event on your map in the Aesia region, to the northeast of the Camos Guidepost landmark, and up the climb of a wall. Approaching a key item near the cliff should trigger the quest A Grey Matter, and following it through will add the hero to your selection. Up next is Dawn Hero Izzard, a healer. The commander of Colony Lambda is a Strategos, and after liberating the colony through the story, you'll be able to take on his hero quest, Unwavering Resolve. Izzard also marks the start of heroes obtained in Chapter 4. The next hero in Chapter 4 is Ghostbow Juniper, an attacker from Colony Tau. This stalker class wields a bow, attacking from afar. You'll get Juniper as part of the story through Chapter 4, by liberating Colony Tau. She teaches two helpful skills to the party, sliding down cables, which opens up your traversal options, and art cancelling. Moving on to Undying Blade Ashira, the Lone Exile Defender. To start her hero quest, called Wrath of Ashira, you'll find the quest-related event marker just outside the gates of Colony 11. When the party comes on Keva's castle, and decides to head to the right to execute their infiltration plan, Instead of continuing in that direction, simply turn around towards Colony 11, and you'll find the start of Ashira's quest pretty close by. 
Next up, the last hero of Chapter 4 is Craft Maiden Alexandria, an attacker with the Incursor class. She commands Colony Iota. There's a few potential steps to this one. You can actually begin this quest as early as Chapter 3, heading towards a quest-related event just southwest of Colony 4. You'll find Agnian soldiers blocking your path, before being driven away by Alexandria and her team. After this, you have two options. Continue down the path of high-level enemies to Colony Iota, or take out Alexandria's allies at several locations in Chapter 3 and 4, across the Fornus and Pentalus regions. They're marked on your map with quest-related events, and they can be some pretty tough battles if you aren't ready for them. Taking them out first makes the battle against Alexandria and Colony Iota much more manageable. However you choose to tackle it, by storming and freeing the colony in the hero quest Her Reasons, you'll get Alexandria to join your ranks. Starting off your heroes available in Chapter 5 is the city's bulwark Monica, a defender. The Lost Vanguard class can join your ranks by completing the hero quest Vandam's Heir, which you can claim by finding a discussion topic in the city. Completing this quest teaches you more about Monica's family, and she decides to join your ranks. Keep in mind, Monica will be unavailable for some portions of the story. Once you've embarked to Erythia Sea of the Cadencia region, the next hero on the list is Proud Banner Fiona, a signifier class that heals and supports the party. You'll find her quest Transparent Dreams on Conch Rock Beach. Another hero found at sea is Defiant Triton, a soul hacker attacker. This is a small series of quests, starting off by spotting the Faranus of Colony 15 in the water. If you dock at Aishan Isle and head to the quest event marker on the island, it should kick off the start of these quests. Then you'll need to sail a bit to the east, where you'll find Hargan Point Camp, and Triton's hero quest, Doing It My Way. This one may feel like a bit of a wild goose chase, going between a few different islands, but trust me, it's worth it. We'll have a whole separate video about the Soul Hacker class if you need to better understand it. The next hero is obtained through story progression, Wrathfist Gondor, a martial artist attacker. Like a few others before her, she'll only temporarily join your party at first, so make good use of her addition to your team while you can. Up next is a character you'll hear about quite a bit, Glory Song Miyabi, Mio and Senna's old friend, a healing troubadour. She'll join your ranks through Mio's side story, which, despite being called a side story, is required for story progression, so you won't miss her. Right after that, you can quickly get the next hero, Smoldering Kamaravi, an attacker in the form of the Seraph class. As soon as you complete Mio's side story and obtain Miyabi, turn back around to Colony Omega. You'll encounter Kamaravi once again, and take him to the city, kicking off the quest A Twist of Fate. Simply complete this quest, and Kamaravi will join your team. Now, an important note here. As soon as you obtain Kamaravi, if you bring him back to the lab in Colony Omega, you'll not only get his Ascension quest, but also get Ethel back on your team. Okay, time for the most complicated hero to obtain in the entirety of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Number 7, Sigiri. The machine assassin attacker is crazy powerful, and also a real pain to get. As far back as Chapter 4, you'll find yourself ambushed by a strange Levness in a quest through story progression called Imminent Illusion. This is only the start of your encounters with these mysterious raiders. After completing Chapter 4, you'll need to go back to Colony 4 and complete many of the side quests available there, in particular Rousing Boliaris and Tactical Eradication, until you discover a new quest-related event marker just outside the gates of the colony. This will trigger the quest Severed Connection, which will lead you to your second encounter with these mysterious raiders. After completing this quest, you must also complete a quest in the city, Writer's Block, which is obtained initially through a discussion topic, leading the party to buy a book, then question its author. The author sends the party to some remote locations, each of which will be marked on your map with quest markers. At several of these locations, in particular the Eternal Canopy, Distant Fingertip, and Vista of Ronar, you'll encounter more of these mysterious raiders. After completing all of these quests, you'll find a new quest event marker south of Colony Omega, which will kick off the hero quest in Humanity to get Sigiri to join your ranks. Plus, Sigiri grants the party Hazard Neutralization, allowing you to navigate hazardous areas. 
Now, if for some reason completing all of these quests still won't make this event start near Colony Omega, you may need to complete more side quests in Colony 4. This is by far the most complex hero to obtain, but given that she's the last one in the list here, it makes sense. But wait, there's more. Did you think we were ending with Sigiri? <laughs> no. Upon completing the story, relaunching your file will open up some new quests and events for you to find. In particular, two more heroes are added to the menu, so let's run through these two as well, as they're pretty quick to get. First up is Nia, the Queen of Agnes. A life sage healer, Nia is an incredibly helpful ally. You can find her by returning to where you originally met Queen Nia in the Cloud Keep, specifically the Hall of the Serene. You'll find a new quest-related event there, and by going to it, Nia will join your adventure. And last, but certainly not least, is Melia, the Queen of Kevis. She's an attacker with the Royal Summoner class. Like Nia, she's quick and simple to get. Simply return to Kevis Castle, and you'll find a quest-related event on your map at the main entrance. Go walk through the castle doors, and you'll get Melia added to your rank of heroes. And with that, that's every hero you can recruit in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Hopefully, you found this guide helpful. Please let us know your thoughts down below, including which hero and class you like best. With that, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned to Game Explain for plenty more on Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Until next time, farewell everyone.